Everybody praise the Lord. Tonight is your night. Something special. I see you there. Something special coming your way. Something special coming upon you tonight in Jesus' name. You are special. Heaven looks at you as special. Christ now who died for you is looking at you and is expressing his love unto you right now. Welcome to Miracle Ground, Miracle in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor and glorify you. Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords, you, have, you are here already. And Lord, we pray that the Holy Ghost will work everywhere on these grounds, everywhere online, everywhere over the radio, the television, Lord, spectacular miracles for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Confirm in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down in the blessing of the Lord. We've been talking about miracles. Why? Because we have divine encounter with the God of miracles. The very first day of creation, as you open the first page of the Bible, miracles. As you come to the next book of the Bible, Exodus, what do you see there? Miracles. And I'm looking at that numbers. Miracle, Deuteronomy miracle. They will come as Joshua appears. You see, it's the same God. Whether at the time of Abraham, or the time of Moses, or the time of Joshua, miracle. And then you open the pages of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Miracles, acts of the apostles, acts of the Holy Ghost, miracle. The point is, God has always been, and God still is, the God of miracles. That's why we're talking about these miracles. We're picking them one by one, and we're looking at, since God is always the God of miracles, what do we do as his creatures? What do we do as his children so that we will activate? Notice the word is always a God of miracles, but there's something that we do, that we activate the miracle of God in our lives. Today I'm looking at John chapter 2 verse 5 John chapter 2 verse 5 his mother says unto the servants whatsoever he says to you do it the very foundation of miracle the fountain from where miracles flow it is the ground of miracle whatsoever he says unto you do it actually the mother Mary talking to them was gathering together in one sentence all of the Old Testament and then the New Testament and the revelation of the power of God Moses was at the Red Sea and millions of the children of Israel needed to cross over and they prayed good some of them cried good some of them were fearful 
not so good. And then God said, Moses, stretch out the rod. Whatsoever he says to you, do it. That's how miracles come. That he speaks, the God of power, the God of all possibilities, he speaks. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And Moses did not argue. There was no debate. He stretched out the rod. And the miracle of the century, the miracle that the world had never known upon the Red Sea divided, the children of Israel passed over, and then the Egyptians that wanted to capture them, make them their slaves. They said, we'll cross over to you. Whatsoever he says to you, do it. And then God said, Moses, stretch that rod. Again, the same rod that parts the Red Sea. The same rod closes back the Red Sea. Why? Because whatsoever he says to you, do it. The mother of Jesus, Mary, gathered together all the revelation that had been there before that time. Here, the children of Israel, millions of them, about three million, the men, the women, and the children. And can you imagine? Three million people is like the population of a major city. Now, no water to drink, no water anywhere. It was desert land. And here, no stream, no brook, nothing. And they were crying. They were thirsty. We'll die of thirst. Remember, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. You see, you are not waiting for any other thing. And God spoke. He said, Moses, take that rod in your hand and strike this rock. God, it's rock. There's no water in the rock. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. There are millions of people here and they need water. Every one of them. Don't think how many the people are how needy they are. If everyone will have a small glass of water, millions of them, how much water do we need? Whatsoever. He says unto you, do it. And Moses, without argument, without debate, without consultation, what are you consulting for? The Almighty the creator, the maker of heaven and earth has spoken. Are you going to take God to a committee? Now, committee, now, consultants, the almighty, the creator, your creator has said something. What do you counsel? No. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And Moses raised up the rod and struck the rock. Lo and behold, water, river of water came out of the rock, and that rock that followed them is Christ. And today, from Christ the rock, the solid rock, the water of life is coming to you. Miracle of life is coming to you. The spectacular miracle of obedience to the omnipotent. That's what we're talking about. Obedience to the omnipotent. When we talk of Christ, it's all power. When we talk of Christ, it's the omnipotent. And whatsoever he, the omnipotent, says unto you, do it. It's the obedience that connects you with the special miracle and the spectacular miracle. Spectacular miracle of obedience to the omnipotent. We're looking at three things as usual. Number one, the obedience of faith for special, for a special miracle. 
Salvation is a special miracle. The obedience of faith. Healing is a special miracle. Obedience of faith. Deliverance is a special miracle. And it is done, it is given by faith. Number one, the obedience of faith for a special miracle. Number two, the obligation of faithfulness by submissive messengers. You see, we're submissive before him. Submissive before him does not mean necessarily lying down on the ground. Is that he says something. And I say, that's my Lord, that's my King, that's the King of Kings, that's the Lord of Lords, and he has spoken, submission means, I agree, I surrender, I submit. And there is the obligation of faithfulness by submissive messengers. Number three is the omnipotence for the faithful by the sovereign maker. He is maker, you understand? He created us. He knows if the eyes are bad, he gives us a replacement. How? You bought a car. You didn't manufacture or make the car. And you do not know the function of every kind of, every knot, every wheel, everything in that car and now something is gone wrong now the car is still all right but a part has gone bad what do you do do you just uh, try i will try no you cannot try you take it back to the manufacturer to the maker and you say this and that and they said that that's all right and they look at they have spare parts for every part of the car they had made and they just get in there remove your badge uh, patch there and they fix in the spare part and everything in the car will run well amen you know God made us, and the eyes are bad. There are spare parts there in heaven. Just tell him. He'll remove the bad parts. He'll fix tonight. He'll fix new eyes on your eyes in Jesus' name. Yeah. Something is wrong with your being. It's as spare parts there. He'll replace that everything will be all right lord look at this it keeps me awake every night because of the pain he has spare parts there he will bring the spare part fix it up did you hear she slept like a baby tonight you go back home everything is all right you will sleep like a baby in jesus name the omnipotence the omnipotence for the faithful by the sovereign maker three things number one now number one is the obedience of faith for a special miracle the obedience of faith for a special miracle look at john chapter 9 in john chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 1 john chapter 9 reading from verse 1 and as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth which was blind which was sick which was a kind of having problem the problem that began at birth look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says when he had thus spoken his patch on the ground a mage clay of the spittle now don't worry about do i understand don't i understand the blind man he, in fact he could not see what was happening and jesus spat on the ground and made clay and he put on 
his eyes and he anointed the eyes of the blind of the blind man with the clay now whether you understand or not that is what Christ did because we're made out of the soil on the ground and because even the whole body as any scientist and they will tell you that the 16 elements we find in the body all those 16 elements are in the dust in the soil and Christ creator Christ maker Christ manufacturer wanted to give him new eyes eyesight and he made the clay and he anointed smeared the clay on his eyes Lord as you put the clay on my eyes I feel worse now I try to blink and I'm feeling uh, some uh, kind of a uh, sensation. Lord, now that you put the clay on my eyes, I'm feeling uh, discomfort. You understand? God is about to heal you. He's about to make a change. And you are told, press up your hand, lay your hand where you have the problem all of a sudden. Uh, you feel the pain increasing and you feel uh, you feel the sickness worsening and you feel your discomfort is now even greater don't look at that don't worry about that whatsoever he says unto you do it and then look at verse 7 in verse 7 and he said unto him go <laughs> lord i'm blind go Lord, can you give me uh, a helper to lead me? Go, whatsoever he says to you. You see, we, we're so natural and we give excuses every time. And we must improve on what Christ is saying. We must adjust what Christ is saying. No, the people in Bible days, they received. They got the miracles that they got is that they were not adjusting they were not arguing they were not trying to improve on the words of god that god is the highest he has perfect knowledge how can imperfect man improve on what the perfect god has said go wash in the pool of siloam which is by interpretation saint and he went his way and he went his way. The secret of having the miracle is that he has said this. He says to the sinner, repent ye and believe the gospel. Final. And once you do that, you're not waiting for feeling. You're not waiting for, you know, I want to see a sign. I want to see flashes from the sky. No. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Once you obey that, salvation comes unto you. The man had with that hand. And Jesus saw him and he said, stand up. He stood up. The hands were still withered, stretch forth the withered hand. And the man did not say, I've been carrying this withered hand for years, and I could not do that whatsoever. He says to you, do it. And the man stretch out the hand, and the hand became normal. Here come ten lepers, and he shouted, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And as they came, he touched the other leper, the earlier one. These ones, no touch. Just said, go show yourself to the priest. The priest will drive us away. They'll see the leprosy in our hand on our face and you'll see some of the fingers already cut off by the leprosy ah, ah. didn't you hear whatsoever he says unto you do it go show yourself to the priest and without argument 
without consultation as they went they were cleansed all of them all of them the ten of them because obedience of faith is what brings a special miracle in our lives and tonight you will obey and you will catch a miracle give me a good amen you know some people are still waiting uh, they said peter <laughs> take me to christ what will peter do already he has spoken the word already he has given the commandment already he has said go and the man went he went his way therefore therefore because of what christ has said therefore he went his way what did jesus say i should do when i get to that a pool of siloam i shall wash and so he washed and he came a scene miracle 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 came because he did exactly that and that's a miracle will come to you tonight when you say open those blind eyes and you will see no other thought no thinking you open your eyes lo and behold you will see everything around you confess and forsake your sin come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest rest restoration regeneration will come to you as you obey that as you come to christ tonight because the miracle of salvation the miracle of healing is in the obedience of faith look at verse 11 in verse 11 he answered and said a man that is called jesus understand the man did not have theology the man did not have deep knowledge the man did not have all the references of the bible in the psalms in isaiah in zechariah that talks about jesus he didn't have all that all he had was obedience of faith all you need to have the salvation to have the forgiveness to have the freedom and to have the deliverance and the healing all you need is the obedience of faith he said a man that is called jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me go to the pool of siloam and wash and i went he said go and i went and washed and i received sight you receive your sight you receive your healing you receive your miracle look at verse 31 in verse 31 we know now we know that god heareth not sinners that the blind man he received the sight he received also insight he received the miracle now he got a message that he was passing across to the teachers of the law he said now we know that god heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of god and doeth his will him he heareth what was he doing the pharisees while pushing christ and look at this new convert he began to reply them do you know what has happened that he told me i was born blind call my parents they will tell you i was born blind and he called the parents and the parents said yes we know this is our son he was born blind and then that son blind son now told the pharisees can i reason with you we know that god does not hear a sinner to work a miracle now he hears sinners when sinners repent 
when sinners say, O oh Lord, in the multitude of your mercies, forgive me, he hears that. When God, when the sinner comes and he says, Save me, O oh Lord, and I shall be saved, he hears that. When the sinner comes and says, I am helpless, heal me, and I shall be healed, he hears that. But when somebody born blind stands before a sinner and he prays to God, the Holy God, and he is deep in sin and he says, I, the sinner, I tell the Holy God, open his blind eyes. God says, who are you? You're not a covenant child. You're not a forgiven son. You're not a saint of God. You're just an arrant sinner and you're commanding heaven. God heareth not. Sinners, the prayer he pray, you pray as a sinner. Lord, forgive me. God hears that one. Lord, save my soul. God hears hears that one. Lord, transform, change my life. God hears that one. But you're a sinner. You want to divide the Red Sea. You have some rod in your hand. God does not hear that. And he says, if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, you know, Christ came to do the will of of the heavenly father i always do his will and then he says him he heareth look at verse 32 in verse 32 since the world began it was not heard that any man any prophet any preacher since the world began yes they divided the red sea they divided jordan yes ezekiah was healed all those people were healed but this man now he got sight and he got insight when christ comes into your life you have sight and you have insight you have perception it says since the world began was it not had that any man of any stature open the eyes of the, the of the one that was born blind he said what i received was a special miracle it never happened before what i've received is a spectacular miracle in verse 33 verse 33 says if this man were not of god he could do nothing but because he is of god the very son of god appointed by god approved by god anointed by god that's how he has opened my eyes but you know that miracle was based on obedience tonight you'll obey the word of god you'll obey the instruction he gives us and miracle will happen immediately salvation will come immediately i wonder why zambia is you know not expressing their voice talk aloud when i say when we pray and we mention that name of jesus on you your miracle will be there in jesus name that's better i come to point number two now point number two is the obligation of faithfulness by submissive messengers the obligation of faithfulness by submissive messengers you understand as we come to him and we want to be submissive messengers we have an obligation we have an obligation i'm looking at numbers chapter 21 and i'm reading from verse 6 and the lord sent fairy serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of israel died i, I need to help you understand when God brought them out of the land of Egypt, all of them, men, women, children, boys, girls, middle age, younger, 
or older, the elderly, when God brought them out of Egypt, he said, you're going to a land flowing with milk and honey. He didn't have death for any of them on his agenda, on his plan. He didn't have death for any of them because they all came out and there was no feeble person among them. Well, healthy and strong. Any death that took place in the wilderness, they brought upon themselves. These people were now on their way and they were going to the land of promise. You will get to the land of promise. I will get to the land of promise. No death in God's agenda for any of them. No death in God's plan for any of them. Now you can check up. You can check up. Those people that died, those were the people that brought the death upon themselves. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. God did not plan they will die. They brought the death upon themselves. And all those people that met with the Moabites and they committed sin with them. And they died, thousands of them. It was not in God's agenda. They were the people that brought the death upon themselves. Now, these people were reading about, they felt tired, they felt discouraged. Understand, there is not an unbroken link with tiredness and discouragement. Many people get tired. They don't get discouraged. You can't say, because I was tired, I must be discouraged. No, the people were the people that allowed the discouragement. They were not looking at the place they were going. And eventually, they speak against God. Now, you don't have to speak against God. You're tired, you're weary, you're pain. You have sickness, you can use your tongue and have good language. Lord, I am tired. Lord, I am weak. Lord, it's like fatigue has taken over my life, but I know this is not your plan. This is not your plan. I want you to do this for me. We can turn every problem to prayer, but they spoke against God and they spoke against Moses. Now, what has Moses got to do with this? You don't have water to drink. He doesn't have water to drink too, everyone. And you have uh, this weariness of the way. He was not using a car. He was also walking. He was more than 80 years of age. And he kept on walking. We don't have any complaint against Moses. But they spoke against God and against Moses. And the Lord sent furry serpents among them, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, therefore, the people came to Moses. Wonderful. And you know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that you have seen. That's not strange. A driver will drive, a swimmer will swim. A farmer will farm, a sinner will sin. It's in the nature. A sinner will sin. That's everywhere, in every country. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the obligation we have in our faithfulness to God is that once we're discovered, we have sinned. We, we come to the Lord. And they said, we have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. They said, we're calm. We're not coming to complain now. What are we to complain about? We we'll see that many are dying because of the fairy serpent. We cannot 
complain. We cannot murmur. We cannot say anything now. We know the reason why. Well, you know the reason why. Then you come to the Lord. If you have HIV AIDS, I know the reason. We don't complain. We don't insult God. Did God send you to that place where you caught HIV? It's no. It's the work of our hand. We know we have, we have venereal disease. We cannot complain. How did I have venereal disease? You know now. You know what happened. And you have that insanity. The evil powers tormenting you here and there. Can we complain to God? No. We know why what is happening is happening. The sinner will have suffering. The sinner will have sickness. And because we know the root of our problem, we come to God. We don't run away from God. We come to God. And they came to God and said, we have seen, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed, and Moses prayed for the people. You'll be prayed for tonight. And God will answer the prayer of faith. But look at something now. God wanted them to do something. You did something to bring the sickness. Now you must do something that will bring the healing. You did something that brought the suffering. Now you must do something that will bring the solution to the problem. What's that? In verse 8. In verse 8 and the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a furry serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass tonight it shall come to pass for you it shall come to pass for your blind eyes to open it shall come to pass for the weakness and the pain to vanish away it shall come to pass for that thing that is knocking your head as if it wants to break your head tonight it shall come to pass your healing it will come to pass your salvation it will come to pass that means it will happen miracle will happen to me miracle will happen to me the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall be, and it shall come to pass that everyone, 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 you understand? Everyone. Many people say, It happened to others, it does not happen to me. It shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. You will live. Yeah. Now, let me talk about everyone. If everyone knew how to speak against God, and against Moses, everyone too should know how to confess. There's no specialty here. If everyone knew how to bring sickness and suffering upon themselves, everyone should also know how to obey the Lord and look. That's all. If everyone knows how to do evil, when Christ comes, everyone too will know how to do good. If everyone knew how to insult Moses and others and any other man, everyone should also know how to express love, affection to 
that same person. So don't say, I don't know what I'll do. You know what you'll do because everyone that is beating, when he looketh upon it, shall live. I bring life from Christ unto you tonight. I bring healing from Christ unto you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and Moses made a serpent of brass. Moses did not ask God, God, we're talking about serpents on the ground, by biting the people killing the people and you are saying i should make a serpent of brass on the pole you see moses had the obedience of faith i don't know how this will work but he had obedience of faith i do not know the science before this the psychology before this moses had obedience of faith i don't know the theology behind this moses had obedience of faith that's what the world is missing that's what the seminaries are missing that's what the men of god the ministers of God that's what they are missing that God says this is what to say and this is what to do and then we're bringing Greek and Hebrew and we're bringing all those ancient languages and we're comparing things God has spoken and it is very clear that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and we're bringing Calvin John Calvin can you uh, can you eat Preach this God has spoken and he has said whosoever whosoever anywhere everywhere whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and God told Moses make a serpent of brass hang it on the pole there and everyone that looks on that serpent of brass will leave obedience of faith and put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass he lived the obligation of the faithful that tonight as we look on Jesus because as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so shall the son of man be lifted up and whosoever will look unto him will be saved will be healed look unto me O ye the ends of the earth and be ye saved and be ye healed and be ye delivered for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever 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 believeth in him will not perish i came to tell you tonight you will not perish whosoever believeth in him that's the look we look because we believe what god has said he has given us his son and we look on that son and you are saved and you are saved and you are healed and you are delivered tonight is your night of that special spectacular miracle in jesus name yeah. we'll come to point number three now point number three is the omnipotence for the faithful by the sovereign maker he made us and because he made us whatever the challenges are the lord is going to remove tonight mark chapter 10 verse 27 mark chapter 10 verse 27 jesus looking upon them says with men it is impossible we don't stop there with men opening the eyes of the blind it's impossible with men 
making somebody who was born lame to rise up and walk it is impossible with men giving pregnancy and child to a woman whose womb had been removed with man this is impossible looking at a man that has a legion of tormenting spirits in him driving him up and down tormenting his life to get that man free with men it is impossible and for somebody who had had a chronic long-standing disease and sickness to be healed and already has gone to many many places had seen many great physicians 12 years or more now with men it is impossible and for you here tonight if you have been a hardened criminal it has affected your brain your mind and crime has become the second nature unto you and you come here tonight and you want that habit to be broken and you want to have a new life with men this is impossible look at the final part there but not with god for with god all things are possible in your life with god all things are possible for your salvation for your forgiveness with god all things are possible for your healing for your deliverance with god all things are possible for the opening of the eyes of the blind for the lame to rise up and walk with god all things are possible say with god say with god all things are possible all things in your life are possible tonight in jesus name because omnipotence because all power because all authority will work for you as you are faithful and you do what he has said we should do and it's very simple it says come it says come unto me it says repent very simple it says believe and that's very simple it says rise up and walk that's very simple open your eyes and see that's very simple stretch out that way that hand that's very simple believe and everything that God has provided through Calvary will happen to you tonight. Amen. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Here is the time for you to have forgiveness, freedom, salvation, a new heart, regeneration, and a total transformation of life don't worry about how will that happen yours is the obedience of faith yours is just to say yes lord i believe and i give myself and i surrender myself it's bowed eyes closed you want this forgiveness you want this salvation wherever you are raise up that hand god bless you there god bless you there god bless you there online wherever you are remember he is the savior you are not your own savior he is the savior and whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved calling does not mean crying calling does not mean weeping calling does not mean rolling on the ground just as you believe and you raise up that hand and say yes lord i give myself 
I surrender myself. I submit myself unto you. The obedience of faith will bring the forgiveness and the salvation. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. You are raising up your hand, please stand up. You are saying, yes, Lord. You came to save. I'm a candidate for that salvation tonight. And I want that forgiveness, that freedom, that redemption, that salvation tonight. That's why I raise up my hand. That's why I'm standing up. As you are standing up, tell the Lord, Lord, you called me to repentance. Lord, I come. I repent. I turn away from my sin. I turn to you as my savior. And I know this moment that I call upon you, I will be saved. It shall come to pass. Say, thank you, Lord. I believe you cannot fail. I believe you have given me the salvation according to your word. I'm praying for you, praying with you now. Father, in Jesus' name, I bring all these who have raised up their hands here at the Alpha location, there over the radio, there over the television, there in their private homes, there as they are listening or watching. Lord, I pray according to your word forgive all their sins in jesus name i pray you bundle all their sins together and put them in the sea of forgetfulness that it will never come back in any accusation to them in jesus name Give them the assurance of forgiveness and the assurance of freedom and the assurance of salvation. Confirm that salvation in every heart right now. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It has come to pass. Salvation now has been given to everyone that calls on the name of the Lord in the obedience of faith. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Say it, thank you, Lord. Say it for the first I thought I'm allowed. Thank you, Lord. I am saved. Confirmation in your life in Jesus' name. We're going to ask our counselors to go around the people. Counselors, you know yourselves. You may train to do this and get to those who have given their lives to the Lord and let them give all the details. And friends, brothers and sisters, new children of God in the house, make sure you give the right details. We we'll call on our overseer to help us now. And then after we we'll finish this session, I'll come back. Your healing is guaranteed tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All the ushers, listen to me carefully. Make sure you spot out all those who raised up their hands. Go close to them. Get their details. Write their names clearly. Preferably if you can write their names in capital letters. Take all their details, their contacts, their phone numbers on the sheet that you have. Let us do it very quickly. I can see this area. I don't see many ushers this side. Let's do it quickly. Take their names, full names, where you can easily be, where they can easily be located. Their phone numbers. Miracle. Miracle. Healing. Healing. Deliverance. Deliverance. Something special coming to you right now. It shall come to pass. It shall 
come to pass. How? Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. That brings the miracle. When he says, stretch out that lame paralyzed hand, whatsoever he says to you, do it. When he says, open those blind eyes and expect to see whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And when he says, get up out of that wheelchair, you are healed. Don't wait for any other sensation whatsoever. He says unto you, do it. Your miracle has come. Amen. You raise up one hand. You lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And at the final amen, God has answered your prayer. Lay your hand where you have the challenge. Raise up the other hand. The mention of the name of Jesus that does it. Father, in Jesus' name, we bring everyone before you now. And we rejoice with great expectation that you are going to touch you are going to heal you are going to deliver everyone because everyone that beheld that serpent of brass when they looked they were healed lord i pray your healing comes upon everyone now in jesus name madness insanity Come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Swelling any part of the body. We mention the name of Jesus against every swelling. Come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Any pain in your body. Any suffering sickness there. Any infirmity there. Lord, look at all your people, those hands raised, laying those hands there, heal them in Jesus' name. Amen. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Internal wounds, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. The vehicle breathing, asthma. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. That fibroid come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Dried up hands, withered hands, short hands grow out now in jesus name those who are lame those who are paralyzed any way you are disturbed and you cannot walk well you cannot bend you cannot rise lord i pray your hand of healing the virtue of healing will come to everyone right now pain go away impossibility go away Amen. rise up and walk in jesus name Amen. lord every kind of miracle every kind of healing every kind of deliverance special spectacular supernatural do it for everyone now in jesus name Amen. here at the alpha location there online, there over the radio, there over the television. Receive your healing right now. And whatever you could not do before, now the power has come upon you. You will do. 
Yes. Miracle is confirmed in your life. Yes. And whatsoever he has said unto you, do it. Yes. Manifestation will come everywhere right now. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. You have got it. The miracle is there. Demonstrate it. You'll find it is done. 